All right, today's the 30th. We've done this once before, and it didn't record, and we're very upset about it, and my voice doesn't have much left on it, so... It's the first time in a long time we've messed up recording the news. So this is going to be a little short, and we just really, I mean, Krista's, you know, disease aside, we just don't have it in us <laughs> to power through another one with the same level of uh, energy, which, you know... But we'll I feel like we made some good jokes, too, dang it. Yeah, we'll show you the stories. Oh, Where's so first choice? of all, let's talk about this honeypot. So it's an amazing honeypot. A really excellent job by the researchers to make a cool honeypot. Ransomware, snooping, and attempted to shut down. See what hackers did to these systems left unprotected online. So you think about a honeypot, you leave, you know, a fake system online to get compromised so you can look and see what the bad guys do. Well, these researchers created an entire factory, you know, machines, automation, robotics, front end, Windows machines, unpatched VNC, the whole nine yards, and they looked at everything that happened. And as you might imagine, there were skilled criminals, there were unskilled criminals, and it was sort of escalating complexity in terms of... Uh, what was there? There was a lot of recon. A lot of a lot of. It seems like one group of criminals would show up, inventory the network, and then another more sophisticated group of criminals would show up. It started out with like Bitcoin mining, and sort of escalated from there. All right. Next story. And medical devices. They're not secure, and it's bad. It's terrible <laughs> because sometimes you know that the medical device is inside you, like the uh, pacemaker or the insulin pump. <laughs> but let's say you get hit by a bus. You're unconscious. They're going to hook you up to telemetry. Guess what? <laughs> MD hex vulnerabilities impact GE patient vital signs monitoring devices. And GE is going to patch those devices in Q2 of 2020. So that's some time away. Seems like bad timing, especially if you're, say, in a patient ward in <laughs> Wuhan waiting treatment. And they're trying to see if you're infected. And it's like, oh, you don't have a fever, but you can't trust that readout. This medical device is mining Bitcoin. <laughs> What's going on? And what better way to hide the number of infections than to turn off the telemetry. <laughs> hmm. uh, what nation state has the capability and uh, motive need to do that? From the last episode, can you imagine if you have the uh, RFID insulin pump? It's like, oh yeah, I put in <laughs> insulin and you can survive. Oh, I'm sorry. There's no RFID chip in this insulin. Please <laughs> eat verification cookie to raise <laughs> insulin levels. <laughs> Uh, Microsoft, let's say that you had a Microsoft support request recently and they had to help you out with something. Well, guess what? Time to change your password. It's the breach of the week. Microsoft discloses a security breach of customer support database. Five servers storing customer support analytics were accidentally exposed online in December 2019. Sad. But even sadder is the kind of person who runs custom router firmware. You immediately hear that and you think, oh, there's a level of sophistication. That's not just some normie who's running out to Walmart and buying one and plugging it in. Except, it turns out that they made a very stupid mistake that's been capitalized on. Internet routers running Tomato are under attack by a notorious crime gang. But only if you left your default passwords on Tomato. Who would do that? You got all that trouble and then you're using the default password? What's wrong with you? Well, we talked about Apple and the FBI have a contentious relationship. FBI says, we want everything you have. And Apple says, no, we love our consumers. We would never, ever sell them out, no matter what. And then they turn off the TV cameras, and Apple's like, oh, we got you, bro. It's oh. really like an on-again, <laughs> off-again relationship. It's, don't worry about it. It's good. <laughs> Reuters has the exclusive Apple dropped plan for encrypting backups after the FBI complained. So if you use iTunes for your backups, it's going to encrypt your phone because it's doing a local backup over a USB cable or whatever. If you use the iCloud backup, it's not encrypted. So the whole like Apple, uh, we're not going to uh, decrypt your device for law enforcement. We're just going to give them your iCloud backup that your phone made like 20 minutes ago, which is not encrypted. Everything in the tech world is subject to, uh, you know, no longer being up to date. You got old stuff, and what do you do with it? You just throw it away. Well, you know what? DDoS botnet operators have the same problem. <laughs> Hacker leaks passwords for more than 500,000 servers, routers, and IoT devices. This is mostly Telnet, but th these were devices the DDoS operator used to use to operate their DDoS. They've moved to a more sophisticated pay to DDoS service. <laughs> so it's like, I don't really need these anymore. Anybody want them? You know, put these on Craigslist. 
You have to pick them up. Yard sale. <laughs> moving on to AI, Facebook is uh, perhaps terrifyingly moving the needle on AI a lot. And good Lord, do we not want Zuckerberg in charge of <laughs> our evil robots that are going to come and kill us and drag us out of our homes because we have coronavirus. And yet, he's made another stride in that direction. Facebook has trained AI to navigate without needing a map. So you can just tell the uh, AI assistant robot, hey, take these papers to Peggy on the second floor, and the AI robot will make its way there without a map. And I was like, oh, Peggy, I don't want to go to Peggy's desk. <laughs> she always wants to talk about 9-11. She always fondles <laughs> my ports. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and if you're thinking that the robot should be shut down, and we need to go to the government and have real debates about whether or not self-navigating robots are safe. Well, you're not safe from that either because they've already got the tools. IBM's debating AI just got a lot closer to being a useful tool. A technique called argument mining lets machines comb through huge data sets and make it help us make decisions. So uh, IBM's hoping that your personal assistant, like your Cortana well, you know, type assistant, your, your uh, Alexa, whatever, Siri, will be able to use this to... Uh, argue with you or you know whatever Cortana disable yourself <laughs> let me give you five reasons why you shouldn't do that <laughs> up on Mars while we were having our emergency here on the earth with a horrible virulent spread of coronavirus the Martian curiosity had its own crisis but the good news is it powered through it NASA's Mars rover curiosity has an attitude problem but it's fine now it uh, listened to some Kelly Clarkson and was like alright <laughs> Attitude. I can do this. That's the joke. It's a science joke. Oh, no. Kelly Clarkson. Is Kelly Clarkson known to like give you a good outlook? Well, apparently, something? all the girls in my freshman dorm room, like in the bathroom, we had a radio and it always played Kelly Clarkson CDs, and it was like that was their personal motivator in the morning because you'd hear Kelly Clarkson coming from the bathroom. Okay. Every day. I hate Kelly Clarkson. There might be a new version of that now. Maybe Who it's would Beyonce. That be? No. I don't know. Like strong, the, independent women. <laughs> I don't know. Kelly Clarkson always had a, like a whining component. The robotic mechanisms, the mo means of locomotion froze, but they got it unfrozen. It's fine. Well, if you have the coronavirus here in the U.S., the good news is you won't be trampled in a hallway waiting for treatment, as is the, maybe the case in Wuhan. But you also won't have the loving touch of a human caretaker. <laughs> Man diagnosed with Wuhan coronavirus near Seattle is being treated largely by robots. And the robot looks a lot like what you guys look like to us. Yeah, that's it's it's a medical cart. I don't think it has any means of locomotion on its own, but it's got a camera and it can do two-way video conferencing, so they can just sort of roll it wherever they need it. On a scale of one to ten, how terrible do you feel? <laughs> Awful, sir. <laughs> Look, the guy looks into the, the the little cart and the doctor's like, "Oh Jesus!" <laughs> I'm like, "Sorry, can hear you." That time that I drilled through my little finger, they were like, on, on a scale of one to ten, you know, what kind of pain are you in? And I just looked down at like the little bits of finger and fat and stuff sticking out of the hole, and I was like, are we really doing this right now? And he's like, okay. And so then he just went to work on the on my finger. I think we we had a joke in the office on the whiteboard that after that happened, it was like it's been five days since the last. It's they been like that, over a year now. They did that when I have the kidney stones. And I was just sitting there thinking, okay, I know what you do. This is like the drug-seeking phasing thing. It's like, why do I need to answer for you to just give me a shot right now? <laughs> and I don't care if you send me home with pills. We just need to solve this now. <laughs> so I think I told him like six or something. Because like the way they play it out, ten seems unattainable. Ten is only if you like you break your femur or you're in the middle of childbirth. <laughs> I think my answer literally was, I'm coherent, but you need to hurry. <laughs> Well, the, if you want to enter the robot revolution yourself, you can always purchase one. And up until now, we've been talking a lot about Spot the Robot. We've been very, uh, we've been salivating at the idea of getting a spot so we can be strangled in our beds. <laughs> Patreon <laughs> <And> stretch goal. <laughs> now, the, the, the time is now for the spot. <laughs> spot the Robot Dog trots onto the big bad world. So. Uh, Adam Savage from Tested, he got one. There's a video of, of him playing with it. It's amazing. There's an SDK that seems to be really well put together. Don't know. Got to play with it. Got to see. They're not selling the robotic arm, the one that can like open doors and 
So you're not going to be able... You don't want to rapture it. Well, you don't want to rapture it, but, I mean, can you imagine how amazing it would be to have, like, a, you know, a a refreshment-fetching robot? Also, Adam Savage from Tested, not Mythbusters. Well, the video was Tested. What decade is this? Yeah. Come on. Apparently a very old decade because of the death of Mr. Peanut. Well, Mr. Peanut was more than 100 years old. Uh, You know, he had a long life. So no one really cared about this until they ran a Super Bowl ad. Perhaps it was time. I I, I go through my entire life without thinking about Mr. Peanut. <laughs> the estate of Mr. Peanut. Oh uh, <laughs> no, at Mr. Peanut on Twitter. Uh, Mr. Peanut died saving Wesley Snipes and somebody else. There's some great art on Fan Twitter. Art. I really I like that one. That one's a good one. That's strong. I mean, it's so bad. And then uh, I really enjoy this one. <laughs> That's actually from Dr. Pepper. Have so. you seen a? Uh, Speaking of weird Twitter accounts, bad Sonic fan art. We shouldn't look that up right now since we're doing a speed run, but like, <laughs> that's some nightmare fuel. There he is. Oh. Oh, they're going to rip that out. Uh, oh. Is that, is that Dark Side Peanut? I don't know. <laughs> oh, it's just so good. But yeah, he's dead, and I can't imagine how they're going to bring him back. I think they'll do a son of Mr. Peanut. I really don't want to feed whatever ad campaign this is. What if they do like a Mr. Cashew? I saw a tweet that was like, okay, we figured out how to monetize every other human emotion. How do we monetize grief and loss? (laughs) Oh, they've been been killing off superheroes for a long time. So. Anyway. If uh, if you do get the coronavirus and you think to yourself, uh, I would like to be mummified if this kills me because I want to one day rise again and terrorize the people of the far future. Well, maybe you won't get your way. Maybe instead they'll just be doing weird things to your decomposed body. <laughs> the AP has the story about the ancient voice. Scientists recreate the sound of an Egyptian mummy. They no took, sound clip. Yeah, there's no... Well, there, you can, there might be in the video. We didn't watch the video. Yeah. Uh, they did a 3D scan and 3D printed a larynx so they could reproduce the sound. They mentioned that like the tongue's <laughs> messed up, I guess. My theory is the only reason you would want to do this is the Stargate is voice locked and they need the voice to unlock the Stargate. It's an Alexa. <laughs> <laughs> it's... A 2,000-year-old Alexa. <laughs> oh my gosh, what if Jeff Bezos is raw? <laughs> He's kind of got that look, doesn't he? He does. Yeah. Could totally see him with one of those headdresses. <laughs> he should get one of those. He He's probably has one yeah, already. He probably does. Well, the people on the International Space Station are immune to the coronavirus so far, and they might be looking on as we all die. Wouldn't that be sad? Because then they'd be <laughs> on a clock. Yeah. But what they don't have is cookies <laughs> until now. <laughs> The well, first space baked cookies took two hours in an experimental oven. So, this was kind of a surprise to everybody. The oven was apparently operating correctly, but for whatever reason, cookies that normally take 20 minutes to bake here on Earth took two hours in space oven. It's high altitude. <laughs> Super high altitude. Also, they weren't allowed to eat the cookies, which is disappointing. The cookies are back here now, but no one is allowed to eat them. That really makes me angry. How bad do you want a space cookie? We should go down to Insomnia and ask for one. <laughs> you got any cookies that were on the space station? If you were going to be in the stream later. Yeah, I know. I, was, I genuinely would like to go eat cookies. but. Uh, Krista, when we previously recorded this, you admitted that you are a terrible dancer and because you just really just go with the spirit of it, right? Yeah, I, I like to explore the space on the dance floor. Mm, that's a good way of putting it. <laughs> and by that I mean... I, 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 way. I like... I, I flail I, around a lot. I think upon consideration, you're reflecting on things that you said that may or may not be going out to the internet to tens of thousands <laughs> think, of people. And no, it's like, perhaps I shouldn't have said those things. No, most of my, my friends and family know I like to dance. And Ex- they know I don't dance well. The phrase, explore the space on the dance floor, makes me think of like a lecherous photographer <laughs> who's trying to get you to take nudes. It's like, just explore the space. Make yeah. it your own and take your top off. <laughs> but then he watches the dancing and he's like, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> this is not sexy to anyone. Cause I don't care how naked you are. That's what we were talking about. Like, you know, I always wear like, I usually do like more athletic wear and I'll wear flats and like, I just go to the bar to get water. What was the, what was the story uh, from your, the wedding that you went to? Oh, it was my best friend's wedding and I was a bridesmaid. And uh, 
afterwards her relatives came up to her and were like was your bridesmaid drunk <laughs> <laughs> she was like no krista doesn't really drink that much and no so they just watched me dance and assumed that i had drank too much at the bar and, no well you probably know how socially awkward that is but did you know that was a huge security risk people can be identified by the way they dance <laughs> i think i have a pretty distinctive dance style and that turns, is white turns out everybody does yeah, yeah. So no matter what you do, there's things about you that an AI can pick out. A 90% success rate to tell it that you're dancing <laughs> your own dance. The AI here, they were trying to train to have it pick up like what the dance is, but instead it just was like, that's this person. <laughs> that's this person doing a slightly different version of the first dance. <laughs> now, do you think that is also kind of like the random number thing where when we get to the Terminator phase, we can force them to dance and immediately identify them <laughs> as terminators. They're like crying, but <laughs> <laughs> it's too perfect. No one has those kinds of moves. Well, the uh, the the coronavirus. Uh, my favorite. Uh, I don't have any dark humor here, but my favorite phrase for it is the kung flu. <laughs> you guys heard that one? No, no I haven't. That's amazing. I, just, I still like Wuhan Tang Clan. Wuhan Tang Clan is also good. <laughs> But anyway, uh, dark humor seems to be something that's not lost on the Chinese people based on their app purchases. <laughs> Pandemic game on Plague Inc. climbs the charts after the coronavirus <laughs> outbreak. That's what, that's, that was it, the, the, it went on sale on Steam. That's the joke that we make here in the office. So the whole point of Plague Inc. and, and you know, Plague Inc.'s been out forever. It's an older game. Uh, is you come up with a perfect you know pandemic virus where you know long incubation period and not super lethal at first because people get clued in unless you play it poorly well yeah and it's for i don't know if it still is but it used to be free on android as well so like if you don't want to spend the like five dollars to buy it you can play it for free on mobile now do you know that their other game is about social uprisings <laughs> which mm. is number two in china which is funny <laughs> because <laughs> hong kong uh. yeah like they're just tailoring it for those people and if we do make it through this pandemic and uh you know we don't all die maybe you'll want to express yourself more than ever because you've learned the the value of life and how delicate it really is and the way that you want to express yourself is with a personalized license plate you're going to have a bunch of new options <laughs> vermont bill would allow emojis on state issued license plates. finally yeah this is going to be great. Although there's not, this hasn't been approved or anything like that. And I haven't said which emojis they're allowing. It's probably limited. Australia's done this for $336, but you can only get heart, smiley, and winky face. Well, I'm, I'm out. No yeah. eggplant and no peach. What's the point even? <laughs> or no poop one. The poop would be a big one. What's that noise? I don't know. That was a bird trying to build a nest in the <laughs> vinyl of the window. <laughs> Stupid bird. He, he sees what's coming. It's like, I must plant my babies indoors. Uh, yeah, it's got a taste of plastic, and then he made that unhappy <laughs> clicking sound. You know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kill this story. <laughs> we don't have time for that. That story was a stupid story. You guys never know what it is. Actually, I don't even remember anymore. That's true. Yeah, totally forgettable. It was dumb. The impeachment is happening, and much to the delight of one Donald Trump, no one's paying attention because everybody's worried about the impending doom that is, you know, creeping up from China. And that includes the people in the room who seem to be having a real hard time paying attention. Senators are playing with fidget spinners, stress balls, etc. to pass the time during the impeachment. So the first time we recorded this, I was like, that's not the worst thing in the world because me and Wendell are both fidgeters. We both have to do something with our hands while we're listening. But apparently some of these people are just reading books. And it's like, well, you're not really paying attention at all at that point, are you? She claimed that, uh, so she's like a really hardcore right wing politician. And she was reading a book about how the liberals are destroying America. <coughs> and they kind of, you know, called her out on it. And she was like, uh, new moms are the best multitaskers in the world. Because apparently she's a bit of a Karen and she's like got a new baby. Well, it's a, it doesn't matter how much you're multi You can't read the book and also absorb the information uh, someone's saying. She's already made her decision. Although Everything this, else is just gravy at this point. Yeah, that's, you're not going to convince her. But Krista, this is coming from someone who buries her head in a book every time we have a meeting. <laughs> that's not me. <laughs> what, you're constantly drawing. Yeah, but I'm still listening. It's a book. <laughs> I'm drawing. 
I'm not reading someone else's thoughts and trying to absorb them. You can't absorb two sets of thoughts at the same time. That's madness. You have to listen to one and then listen to the other. The people who are doing other things while listening to this right now disagree. So the uh, other people who are being usurped by the Wuhan virus, who are probably not as happy about it as Mr. Trump, are the Australians. Uh, everybody had a lot of sympathy for them, but now they're distant, distant memories. Now everyone's just stocking up on antibiotics. <laughs> yeah, but they tried to uh, do some fundraising to, to get rid of the fires. I know it rained. Did the fires go out? Are they still burning? I think some of them are still burning. But a couple of people had a good idea. We talked about uh, there was an Instagram thought who was giving away nudes if you prove that you donated to the fires, which is... I guess that's okay, right? To the firefighting efforts. We don't donate to the fire. <laughs> no, I donate to the... I like sent money just to be thrown into the fire. <laughs> but uh, this British entrepreneur in Australia had a different idea, not quite as well uh, received. <laughs> Sydney Morning Herald uh, seems a little incensed when they report that this uh, British entrepreneur shot down over a plan to sell koala fur as a bushfire fundraiser. Who, the real question I had was, who gets the koala fur? Well, like, no, you auction it off. No, but I mean, like, who is who is who harvests who, it? Yeah, who's <laughs> running into the fires to get the fur before it's burn up? Also, are they just like, is there a warehouse full of dead koalas somewhere? Well, you know, you can't just let it burn there. You got to run in there and kill them or yeah. save them. I don't think he had answers for those questions. He was just—he's just a high-level idea man. The help does that. <laughs> I bet it was like one of the princes or something. They're just like, oh, it's just some random guy. <laughs> Definitely not one of Britain's royal family. We've taken enough heat this year. And speaking of poor animals being subjugated, the iguanas of Florida. Now, they're an invasive species, so they don't get a lot of sympathy, not like the koalas. And in Florida, it doesn't get very cold very often. But lately, it has been getting cold. And something very special happens when it gets cold in Florida. Falling iguanas prompt sale of chicken of the trees. The iguanas kind of go into like a comatose state, and their little claws can't hold on to the trees anymore. They are cold blooded, cold. and this is the result. Mm. If you're someone who uh, is a vegetarian, maybe don't watch this segment of the program. I, I say 10 seconds after it's been on the screen. You think the tail is good eating? I bet mm. it is. I would, I would eat a lizard. It's probably bony. They're kind of slow moving, so maybe they're not that muscly. I don't know. I bet they're strong, though. If you've eaten iguana, please comment. I've eaten alligator. Ooh, alligator was good. Chicken of the swamp. It's not the same, Krista. <laughs> Is it still recording? <laughs> yeah, check, actually. I checked earlier. <laughs> okay. It's still recording. Uh, uh. We're almost, almost there. <laughs> don't want to lose that chicken of the swamp comment. And uh, it would be a shame if we didn't finish this last episode of the news before the world ended. And we are definitely on the clock. The doomsday clock moves closer than ever to midnight. It's 100 seconds from midnight. 100 seconds less than uh, down from 120. Yeah, the uh, the escalating tensions with the... Uh, yeah, we're just getting closer to the great filter. That's really the longest short of it. Yeah, we got biological warfare, nuclear warfare. We got the fires. More sophisticated weapons than we, we've ever had. We got the... Um, what was the other... Like the fall of Rome indicator. Anyway, um, I don't remember. We're screwed. <laughs> Look, this civilization has developed a single weapon that can wipe out all life on the planet. It seems inevitable somebody would set that off, either accidentally or on purpose. Live it up while you can. And donate to Patreon. <laughs> Inside Still Edition went to San Francisco one. and they aimed to prove that crime was rampant. They were super successful. Inside Edition crew gets robbed while reporting on San Francisco Bay Area crime. Let me set this up for you. They got a car, just a completely ordinary looking car, and they went, you know, went shopping and left the shopping in, in the back seat. So there was like a speaker and a lady's handbag and some other stuff. And they staked it out in the news van. So the news van was like across the road or somewhere that had a view of that car. And so sure enough, like not very long after parking the car, there was a smash to grab. Somebody smashed the window out and you know grabbed all the stuff all the stuff had gps trackers in it so it was easy for the news crew to track the people that stole stuff so they were going to try to get an interview with the people that, that stole the stuff. only people in all of san francisco that have yeah. been stealing things yeah so they they got a, you know they saw the robbery happen they got out of the news van and you know they, they chased him down and they did the interview with the people and they got the stuff back the news <laughs> van was being robbed at the same time 
I hope they're packing <laughs> heat. San Oops. Francisco, Krista. So they weren't packing heat? Oh, not in California. Just pulled out a spork and was like, get out of there. <clears throat> I feel like if in that area they allowed firearms, that would make that a lot more interesting. Like the news crew was armed and it's like, oh, are you robbing me? Yeah. It's like, mm, I'm mm. armed. You are a literal Nazi for suggesting that. <laughs> <laughs> President Sanders wants to know your location. <laughs> I turned off notifications. Oh, uh, you can't do that anymore. <laughs> That's outlawed. Well, maybe this, you know, you've seen the, uh, the, delicate mortality with the coronavirus and you think to yourself I need to bring some love into my life I need a pet I need something that will adore me and I can cuddle up to at night and there are a lot of excellent options out there and one really bad one (laughs) the world's worst cat is up for adoption at a North Carolina shelter so apparently this cat likes to hide in the dark and hide where you'll trip over her and scare you and she doesn't have a happy face there let's be honest yeah I mean this, this cat's apparently terrible doesn't like other pets, doesn't like children, will lure you in to scratch her belly, but does not tolerate her belly being scratched. <laughs> and it's very violent. So they suggest that someone who wants a cat in their life doesn't really want to ever interact with it. Do you want to just bring this creature into your home, deal with its attacks, and feed it? This is the cat for you. <laughs> just something to keep you on your toes for the apocalypse. <laughs> Oh, you're trying to trip me down the stairs again. <laughs> Good. But what if, you know, a lot of women, like, they're attracted to men who they can fix. Like, that's a really common thing. <laughs> it never works out, but what if you're that kind of person? What if you really turn this cat around? I don't think that cat's probably old enough. You don't know that, Krista. You don't know. That would be a magical tale that you could document on YouTube and get millions of clicks. Meanwhile, if you hate animals... Perhaps, uh, well, vacation in China would be a bad idea, wouldn't it? Yeah. Mm. Uh, Maybe after this clears up, you can head over there because (laughs) they don't care about animals at all. Outrage after Chinese theme park forces a pig to bungee jump. So uh, this new theme park has a new attraction, and that's the bungee jump. So they put a cape on a pig and... (laughs) (laughs) This one does. It's like an afterthought. Like, it's not on there good. (laughs) It's a flying pig. <laughs> so, of course, people, not in China, people in China don't seem to care. But uh, people elsewhere are really outraged about this. But when the, they contacted the theme park for comment, they said, well, we sent the pig to slaughter. It was good eating. What's the name of the, the theme park in West Virginia? Camden. <clears throat> Camden Park. This could happen at Camden Park, but afterward, the pig there would have become like the mascot of Camden Park. Camden Park for sure doesn't have bungee jumping. <laughs> no, well, not last time I visited. <laughs> But, you know, maybe they're introducing that attraction. Also, you say nobody in uh, China cares. I'm sure there's some people in there's China. There's a few people that maybe care. They might have some other concerns right now. Mm. But I just can't help but think about the roller coaster of emotion this poor pig went through because he thought he was going to die, and then he didn't, and it was like a flood of relief. Then they killed him. Really? <laughs> he should have become, like, the mascot. What's happening? Ah, I'm, I'm flying. I'm you know, flying. Like the presidential pardon for the turkey, that's what it should have <laughs> But they been. have that massive pork shortage over there. Yeah. So they're definitely not going to spare a pig. Even a good one like Wilbur there? <laughs> you know what? Even if that one could do calculus, I don't think they would have spared him. <laughs> no. And finally, let's just double check. Still oh, recording. Still recording. Still <laughs> recording. Oh, we've made it to the end. And one of our best ending stories is a story about justice and uh, mental handicap. <laughs> Furry stop assault a woman on San Jose streets. This is actually like it's a positive story. It's just comical watching them run up. Yeah. So this woman was being well, assaulted. And I don't was, care about you, Ken Bastida. I have to restart the video. It was outside of uh, FurryCon. And they saw what was happening, so they put a stop to it. Oh, what? What? No. CBS, no. I love the, it's like the pinkest, furriest costume. <laughs> is the one who, like, gets on the ground and beats This, this cameraman is trash, though. Like, this is terrible. At least he's not filming vertical. It's a plus. So this was uh, some sort of domestic dispute going on. I believe it was, does that look like a man? Someone assaulting a woman, and the furries uh, descended. Intervened. They, they got their hackles up, <laughs> and they stepped in. Good for them. Yeah, this is good. 
That's it for this week. Sorry, this was a weird episode. Yeah, second time around was definitely not as good as the first, but we lost it. Oh, shut up. Quality. Shut up, yeah. CBS. <laughs> oh, it's so loud, too. Bay so, Area. So much louder than the other video. Oh, it's funny that this was also in San Francisco. I know <laughs> San Jose. I'm sorry. San Jose. Bye. See you next week. <laughs>